Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and we have some exciting stuff today. So before I get going, I want to mention with all this ETF stuff going on, there's a lot more going on to, to, to all of this. I'm going to show you some of it about how big what I think is coming is. And so this is a part of that my sponsor linked to. They do have Ripple equity on the platform, I believe. So you're going to want to check that out. I think this, the uh, future is extremely bright for what Ripple, Ripple and XRP. At you can go to linqto.com, um, Ripple Private Equity is there, or you can download the link to app. Okay, here we go. Check this out. Do you remember this? BlackRock and Citadel were planning to la launch a stock exchange. Okay. Um, plan to launch new national stock exchange in Texas. Do you remember this? We believe the next step going forward will be the tokenization of financial assets. And that means every stock, every bond will have its own basically QSIP. It'll be on one general ledger. Every investor, you and I, will have our own number, our own identification. We can rid ourselves of all issues around illicit activities about bonds and stocks and digital by having a, 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 a tokenization. But the most important thing, we can customize strategies through tokenization that is, if it's every individual. We would have instantaneous settlement. Think about all the costs of settling bonds and stocks. Mm -hmm. But if you had a tokenization, everything would be immediate mm -hmm. because it's just a line item. And so we believe this is a technological transformation for financial assets. I believe if, if you want to talk about like voting and voting choice and all the things, every, if we know every moment who is the owner of that stock and it's now time to vote, every individual who has ownership is identified and they can vote their own share. There you go. So then this popped up today, and I want to show you this. Dallas, Texas is already a massive... This is Texas Governor Greg Abbott. ...financial center, but when you put a stock exchange in there, uh, that will make it really the, the financial heartbeat uh, of the entire country. Importantly, Julie, one thing that it does is this. Uh, it's so important to all different types of businesses to have access to capital. Uh, this will be a stock exchange that will ensure uh, any type of business is going to have access to capital uh, in a business-friendly state uh, like the great state of Texas. Uh, it's the best funded stock exchange to go seek permission from the SEC ever. Uh, and then look at the leaders of it. Leaders of it have come from the NASDAQ, come from the New York Stock Exchange parent company, have come from uh, businesses like Charles Schwab. And also, Julie, very importantly, the, the lead investors in this are all of the uh, most uh, significant uh, traders of stocks uh, and, and other things like that uh, in, in the entire country. And so all of the elements have come together uh, to really ensure that Texas is going to kick off the stock exchange very prolifically. I believe that the main reason they're opening this stock exchange is for crypto. I think that this is where your crypto ETFs are going to be. I think they're going to tokenize stocks and this is where it's going to be traded. I think they thought, well, why should we try to incorporate this into the New York Stock Exchange instead of just creating one from the ground up? Now, some of this could go in the All the World's a Stage file. I'm gonna, I want to show you, these are the people, that, this is the team behind the Texas Stock Exchange. By the way, this is going to be in Dallas, Texas, and by the way, if you're in finance, this screams. Uh, that moving to Dallas might be a good idea because there's going to be some serious opportunity, opportunity there. But I wanted to show you the one guy that caught my attention. His name would be Brett Redfern. Do you remember him? Brett is former director of the, of the Division of Trading and Markets, U.S. Securities Exchange Commission. He had key roles in finance, market infrastructure, global head of market structure, J.P. Morgan. This guy was at Bear Stearns, but he was J.P. Morgan. And he, Brett Redfern, is from, he's also on the advisory board of Securitize, which is a Ripple investment. 
But here is Brett. The, remember, do you remember June seventh, uh, two thousand eighteen, seven days before the Ethereum Free Pass speech? This was Jay Clayton, Clayton talking to Bob Pisani. Officers are being taken advantage of, or there's some areas you feel the SEC needs to to act on. Well, Bob, th thanks and thanks for being here. Um, look, we are always good. We're always concerned that there are areas where investors are. All right. Well. Brett Redfern was at the same place with him and spoke either before or after Chair Jay Clayton. The chairman declined to say whether Ether or Ripple were actual securities, but is it fair to say that this is likely ultimately going to be litigated in the courts? Uh, it's unclear to me whether or not that's going to be litigated. I don't want to speak about any specific products, and I do believe that there will be statements on at least one of those products forthcoming in the future about you know providing some more more guidance on he that. He knew as he stood there, as he sat there talking, he knew that in seven days they had been talking via email behind the scenes to get Ethereum a free pass so it, it would not have to go through litigation. We, we, we can prove that now because we have the emails that we ha really had to work to get, put a lot of pressure to get. Right here, he's going back and forth. This is to Bill Hinman from Brett Redfern. As written, the language remains vague as to whether Ethereum is a security. If you want to make an affirmative statement that it is not a security, the language could be stronger. In other words, just say it. All right? So he was encouraging Bill Hinman, just say that Ethereum's not a security. Let's go ahead and get this behind us. And then, this is the other interesting part. At Ripple Swell, you're going to have the CEO, co-founder and chief executive officer of Securitize, will be there at Swell. I don't know which parts of that you put in the All the World's a Stage file. Bitwise made it official today. We filed an initial registration statement on Form S1 for a new Bitwise XRP ETP. We believe blockchains will usher in a new apolitical monetary uh, assets and permissionless applications for the 21st century, said Bitwise CEO Hunter Horsley. We aim to help investors access the opportunities in the space and are excited to continue that work with our filing for a Bitwise XRP ETP. Link to the press release below. And then James Seifert says, after the trust was registered in Delaware yesterday, Bitwise just officially filed for their XRP ETF with the SEC. Vet says, Bit, here's the from the Edgar, Bitwise XRP ETF is now on the Edgar site, right there. So it has been filed with the SEC. Eleanor Terrett found another one. Here's a little Easter egg from my latest piece on Bitwise. Someone else incorporated an XRP ETF last week. As shown on the Delaware Division of Corporations website, Canary Capital, a new crypto-focused investment firm founded by Steve McClung, a former CIO and, and co-founder of Valkyrie Funds. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I have been unable to shake this thing for a couple of weeks now. <sighs> I did go to the doctor though. Okay. Um, then we have this from Brad Garlinghouse. First Bitcoin, then ETH. It was only a matter of time. This move underscores the growing trust and integration of digital assets like XRP into traditional finance, marking the continued adoption and maturation of the crypto market. I sense this is just the beginning. Um, let's let's look at the Ripple stable going tracker again. A reminder: this is not live, but it is. Uh, they are minting things while they're testing. Uh, One hundred fifty thousand RLUSD minted at the uh, RLUSD Treasury. There's where four hundred fifty thousand was minted. So they are. They do continue to test. This is the the clip that I had uh, was telling you about. Either yes, I think it was yesterday that Coindesk had deleted. This is, he's talking to the Tether CEO. This broader kind of conspiracy of, of, of hey, Tether is, the, the entire thing is uh, illusory. It's a, it's, a, it's a scam, it's a fraud or, or whatever, which to me, the substantive part of, of the conspiracy is just how are you going to grow in the world? How are you gonna become more compliant, more transparent? Where are you with, with respect to regulations and audits and all that kind of stuff? We are working with 104 law enforcement agencies in 40 countries. So 
there is, it's much easier and much more uh, protecting to use traditional financial system to do bad Euro things. Because, I mean, look at all the banks that were fine to because they were lending money for drug lords. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I, it doesn't make any sense for anyone doing illicit activity to use USDT. And I think also, we look at also even Bitcoin, right? So when Bitfinex was hacked in 2016, it took six years, <laughs> but we were able to track the perpetrators with law enforcement and they were caught and the demand, they, our Bitcoins now are in the hands of the DOJ. Tether doesn't exist today unless it's, unless they're involved with the government. It's a government operation. I've been saying it for a long time. Uh, this was an, a holy shit moment for me, says Crypto Insight UK. Here's Ral Paul. I don't really care about Donald Trump. But I think what they think is the next four years is the make or break. Within four years, blockchain goes from, you know, wherever it gets to the end of this cycle, call it 15 trillion or 12 trillion or 10 trillion. And by the next cycle, it's 50 trillion. Right, then it's done. There is no argument. It is taking over the world. AI, four years, AGI. Clearly ubiquitous AGI. So I think they are going to try and use the political process to remove as many roadblocks as possible, which makes sense because the Chinese will build too. And the Democrats have been very slow in this process in accelerating this. So I think the accelerationists are going to take over the government. Yeah, I mean, whether they get voted, whether Trump gets voted or not, it's a different matter. But it feels like the accelerationists are going to take over. Yeah. Uh Oh, then we have this uh, from Crypto Insight UK. The XRP community has been called conspiracy theorists, cultish, stupid riddlers. Some of these are probably true. However, it doesn't help things that the day bank stocks fall heavily and WW3 potentially starts, we get an XRP ETF filed. There's fuel for, for conspiracy. Uh, we love conspiracies here. Nothing wrong with that. Are we in for a October 7th XRP surprise, folks? That's the question. Right there. But one of the big events, of course, is happening next week. That's October 7th. Let me zoom in on that right there. The deadline looms for the SEC appeal to the ripple rolling, ruling. And uh, I don't know, do you guys think that it's gonna happen? Do we get an appeal by the SEC? Drop some comments down below. I'd love to get kind of your feedback. Our team says, no, we don't think there's gonna be a appeal. If there is one, something is uh, out of balance. So we'll see how it plays out. We shall see. One now, of the big events, of course, is um, happening. In DAIXRP.com, here's what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about um, shocking recordings that are to be released okay this is wild <laughs> and i'm going to show you and some uh photos are beginning to leak this is going to be the most interesting 35 or so days that we have in our lifetimes folks between now and the election i think there might be multiple october no october surprises there i, I just think that we're talking anything can happen i'm the digital asset investor i'm not an investment advisor this is for entertainment purposes only please subscribe hit the like button tell your friends and family here we go